Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Um, today we're going to be doing a guide on formations and tactics once again, but this time we're going to be looking at our enemy Sturgia. Now we haven't declared war on him, but we will do it with this party. Now he has roughly 120 heavy Sturgian forces, so we're going to be going against this guy, showing off some just very basic um, tactics and formations that we've learned that deals with these guys the best. Now Sturgia, so the snow hardened viking ish kind of people that they are um they are they lack massively cavalry and um archers but what they do excel in is have very very heavily armored and armed troops now their infantry their heavy axemen and heavy spearmen are very very formidable foes their armor is probably one of the best in the game they are very hard men to cut down um and where their archers lack they make up for in the fact that their troops, most of whom carry javelins. So I think from the very second upgrade that you give them, they start throwing javelins at their enemy. So these guys can pack a pretty big punch against your forces. So one of the main things that we need to look at, um, having a good amount of cavalry if you're going to go against um, a war against these guys is something you definitely want to look into. So you definitely want to have um, a higher mounted number than these guys. Although their elite or noble unit is the Sturgeon Brigand and these are exceptional cavalry um, but they're not the best cavalry so what they do have is they have their, like I said their javelins which they get a few good hits from but once they're out of javelins they turn into just pretty regular cavalry they're not that strong their armor's pretty weak um, I'd say they're probably in comparison with some mercenary horsemen um, so they're not the best cavalry in the world so if you do have a strong mounted force and um, both horse archers both and cavalry you should be okay with going to war with Sturgeon Sturgia. so like I said they're Focus is on having very slow moving, heavily armoured infantry. Um, but actually, saying that, it's very. The top units of theirs are slow moving and heavily armoured, but their lower units are very fast moving and uh, th have their javelins. So they have very focused uh, strength in dealing damage um, and also very focused strength on having high armour. So although the javelin men have no armour, they're fast, so they're fast moving, so they have quite a mix. But the focus is on their infantry mainly. So if you have high amount of uh, mounted troops, you should be fine with going to war against Sturgia. But for this battle, we kind of have a balance of everything, more focus on infantry and archers. But if we had more cavalry, this battle would be a lot easier for us to win and uh, to take these guys out. Now bringing in archers against these guys is probably something you definitely want to do. Um, crossbowmen are something I'd recommend against these guys because like I said they're very slow moving they're top two troops and they have very high armor so having crossbowmen in your formations having that long range but more importantly having that armor piercing punch which you can then send your bolts into the enemy and really start to pierce through their heavy armors that's something you want to consider so if you're going to war with these guys you definitely want to bring more crossbowmen now I've got a few and you'll probably see in the feed that they get a few more kills um, but most of my forces are going to be regular archers, but what something I should definitely do, and something I recommend to you guys, is bringing in crossbowmen against these guys, um, just purely because of their armor. Crossbows are definitely going to be the way forward. Um, you're going to want to bring these guys down as quickly as possible. These guys in the background here, his, bo his bodyguards, these are the heavy spearmen. Um, big, big threat. The heavy axemen are just as bad as these guys. They take a lot of hits to kill, and you need some pretty good weapons to actually deal damage to these fellas. They're very, very strong. But like I said, they don't have much cavalry. The cavalry they do have, the Sturgeon Brigands, they're very fast moving and they use their throwing weapons to deal damage. But if you can take them out nice and quick, use your archers to bring those guys down, you should be fine. And they never have too many of them. Like Their main focus is on having infantry. Now their archers aren't the worst in the world. I'm, trying, I'm making them seem worse than they are. They're not the worst. Um, but obviously they're not the best. The Sturgeon, Sturgeon archers can have a lot of armor again, and, but they don't do much damage. But that again is another problem with these guys. They take a lot of hits to kill. Their main focus is on armor. So their archers can be a problem. If you don't deal with them quick enough, um, they take a lot of hits to bring down. They really do. Um, if you're somebody who uses a glaive like me on horseback and starts to strike, gets one hits on most enemies, you'll find that going up against Sturgeon Bowmen, you don't always get one hits on these guys. A lot of the time, it takes a few. Uh, they are very, very strong troops. So we're going to jump in. Um, we're going to deliver our demands and offer him one chance to yield or die. Now we're going to attack him. Like I said, 1-2-1. One, one. We've got 1-3-7. So we're just above him in number here. And the power levels are much in our favor. So probably not the best example. But like, there you go. 116 infantry. Uh, unfortunately, he's got 48 recruits. So we'll just do this battle quickly. Um, but then I'm going to do another one after this where I'll find somebody who's got more of a built-up force. Now the problem with this world at the moment, I'm trying to find a battle, but these guys are in a lot of wars. So most of their um, party leaders 
don't have the best units. Now, this tends to happen with Sturgia. They usually find themselves in a lot of wars. Um, so I will find another one after this battle, but we'll just go ahead and show you the gist of what formations and tactics we're going to use against these guys, and then we'll find a better battle to actually put that to the test and see if it works. So we'll jump in here, and like I said, first things first, what we want to do is um, basically we want to negate their... Uh, we want to negate their javelins so we want to split our infantry now we're pretty much from the uh, from the get-go we're going to be doing a reverse tactic that we used against the Vlandians and in the Vlandians we had our archers to the rears and we had our infantry focusing the center now in this we're going to be splitting our infantry into two groups and we're going to put them on the far left and far right hand side but we're not going to be putting them into any specific formation. There's no circles, no squares. Now, I just realized um, I've jumped the gun a little bit. The enemy is waiting for us to attack. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and bring them towards us. We're going to set up our units down the end of this field and uh, prepare for the battle. But essentially what you want to do, and I'll have to get this in the next one once we get attacked, which hopefully will happen. Um, now that we're at war with them, we should be able to find quickly somebody who tries to come against us and attack us but essentially what we want to do is we want to make a nice V line so we want to have our infantry on the far left far right and we want to have all of our archers in the center and now this way we can send the enemy javelins and the enemy heavy armored infantry into our infantry but yet leaving the middle secure enough that our archers can shoot through it um, so we'll get our footmen there footmen there and then once they're all here, we'll start our formation. So we've got a couple of cavalry, not a huge amount, but we've got enough. Um, now the enemy's holding that hill, but like I said, 116 of that is infantry. And if we try and get a nice close look, we can run through what kind of forces they have. Yep, there comes out the javelins. Gotta dodge that, they don't throw any at me luckily, one or two. But nothing major. Oh, very heavy shields, heavy armors, uh, but unfortunately for us, there's a lot of recruits in there. So probably not the best example. And we're going to be using our assault tactics against these guys. So they're holding quite a nice shield wall. Obviously, they've got some very strong shields protecting them. Um, but once we are in position, they will begin to charge at us. So we can still use our formations and tactics properly, uh, but just not straight away. Once we've done enough damage to their infantry, they'll begin to push towards us. So we can get everyone in position. And we want our infantry, like I said, one on the left and then one on the right. I don't know what formation, they're in a column for some reason. I don't know when I did that. Which is probably why they're so far away. And then we want our archers in the center, more or less. We've killed one there. So once we kill probably a couple more, they will start to move in this direction. We've got one of our infantry units on scene now. Um, so we just need to get the other one here, and we should be fine. Your infantry unit number one. Now we're going to get these guys into a shield wall. Get a few more kills. There we go. So the enemy is starting to move. So we probably want to push these guys up a little bit further forward. Our other infantry force hasn't quite made it here yet. We've got quite a few crossbowmen there firing away. And as the enemy infantry, you can kind of get a grasp from looking at this angle what's going to happen. So they're going to move into our infantry there and had we had infantry on this side they would split down the middle so as their infantry is moving to our right flank which hopefully we might be able to get them to do actually I don't know if it's too late it might be too late but we kind of create a funnel so as they split and hit the left and the right flanks we're getting a good view at their side profiles so our archers are firing dead in the center of that unit hitting both flanks. Probably want to move our infantry on the left back a little bit and we might be able to urge them to split up, moving our cavalry just back a little bit. But as you can see, our archers again, our archers are carrying the way. Now they're beginning to go um, more into the center. Looks like they're coming towards our archers. Now what should happen if the plan goes well is they should start to split apart. And if they don't, it's not the end of the world because you know what's happened? Our infantry is now in a flanking maneuver. So our infantry is just going to hit them in the backsides. Now they are charging dead towards my archers. They're holding that shield wall, which means they're not using any of their javelins. Now we can send our infantry in. And it worked out even better because all we're going to do is hit their entire force in the flanks. We're going to run our archers away because we don't want them to get caught here and killed. Although they're seeming to hold their own either way. 
But our infantry now comes in. Well, they should have come in. And uh, hit them in the flanks. But now that the enemy's running away, we can send our archers in and again hit them in the other flank. Crushing them in the dead center. So if the enemy, if we didn't outnumber the enemy, if we hadn't attacked them, what would have happened is, like I said, what should have happened was the enemy would have split and hit the two infantry formations with our archers then hitting them in the middle. Um, that would have been the ideal situation and that would have been what happened. But what happened here wasn't that much worse. So they, moving towards our archers, infantry somehow managed to gain a flank and they can hit them in their backsides of the shield wall where the enemies aren't going to defend from them. And it's not like our archers are the worst in melee combat either. We've got some decent guys here. We've got a lot of palatine guards, a lot of crossbowmen, so quite heavy, um, heavily armoured guys that can hold their own while our infantry do most of the work. Plus, most of the kills come from the archers, as always. But no deaths, no wounded, absolutely annihilated them. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go and find a party with some better quality troops and uh, repeat these tactics and use them a little bit better. So I'll see you guys in a moment and we'll get on that. Okay, here we go. So it's the best I could do. We've got three lords here, um, including Ragnvad, the leader of their party. As you can still see, he's still got a fair few recruits. Um, out of his 114, 20 of those are recruits. So we've managed to pick up a force that outnumbers us quite significantly, and that should make up the difference. Unfortunately, again, he's got 40 recruits. Um, but it just seems that in this playthrough, most of them seem to be quite weak. So hopefully them outnumbering us will make up the difference. The power difference is more or less in the uh, middle. So we'll go ahead and try this um, again. Like I said, they should have a lot more top tier troops as there's three of them and we've got the leader in there as well. And I know for a fact he has got the top tier troops in that party. So we'll move on. Uh, the, right, they attacked us as well, so that means we can use our tactics more efficiently. Split our men in two. Now we've got a little bit of a hill here. Issue here is with the trees. So we want to move into a clearing down here. Get our infantry into two separate locations with our archers seemingly taking the middle position. Hopefully just there where they can shoot past these trees. Now if we've got enough time, we can move forward a little bit more. Like I said, they're probably holding a shield wall and moving forward very slowly. As you can see, they are moving forward, but very, very slowly. And they've got a couple of cavalry either flank. But again, they never usually have that many cavalry anyway. So our infantry is going to hold both those sides. Archers are going to push forward just to that tree line so we can use them more efficiently. Infantry is going to form a shield wall. The infantry is going to push up. And we're going to angle them just ever so slightly to create a kind more of a funnel effect like that. Much nicer, much better. Should be able to hold them. And then we've got this formation which we need to shield wall. And same again, just have them face inwards, that fraction more. Their archers are going to run to the front here, probably get a few Sturgeon Woodsmen. Uh, let's try and twist around a little bit more, fellas. Perfect. And then what we can do is just have our cavalry here, horse archers here, and then they can protect that flank because the enemy formation is running a little bit wide. Now, they're not holding their shield ball formation, and as you can see, Kind of splitting down the middle here, but a lot of them are pushing towards the infantry units. I've got one of these guys, I see. I actually killed him quite easy. Doesn't usually go that easy. As you can see, the enemy is being absolutely slaughtered. So it's hard to find a really good example of a well built up Sturgeon force. There's a few good troops in here, they're getting a couple of kills. Um, infantry is being absolutely de underdeveloped here. Underdeveloped? enveloped um, but now our archers have slaughtered their guys they're going to resume their positions right flank can start charging they've slaughtered their guys archers are going to start hopefully firing onto the left flank although they've hold their own anyway and you can see there's a lot of axemen most of them have got their javelins um, when, when they use them properly they can do massive amounts of damage initially to your formations especially the archers but as like as i said as long as you've got a good force of archers you've got some fairly decently leveled archers you should be absolutely fine with these sorts of formations um if you're using a formation like this which kind of puts a lot of focus on your archers keeps them wide open and um, then you want to have 
them quite bunched together, possibly even in a shield wall. It just makes sure that they're more protected because in formations like this, they will be entering melee. It's not like it's just part of how it works. And um, obviously, the infantry on either sides they take a lot of the infantry out of the equation, and then they protect the flanks of your archers anyway. If you've got a huge amount of infantry, then you can put an extra formation behind your archers and use them as well. Um, again, likewise, if you've got a lot of cavalry, a lot of um, horse archers, you can use them to divert a lot of attention. But that's the main thing with these formations, guys. Is you want to try and you want to try and take away as much of the enemy attention as you can. You want to distract. You want to diverge and just send them off in different directions. You want to take off a massive chunk of that huge infantry, and you want to send it in the complete wrong direction so that when they actually engage your infantry it's they you know they're dealing with so fewer men that they can win a lot easier because when you've got all of the enemy you've got hundreds of them crashing down on your poor little infantry formations they're going to get overwhelmed but if you can split up the attention in this case three ways so we've got three points of attack with our archers dealing massive amounts of damage before they've even connected um, then you should be able to win fine and if you've got your horse archers on one flank cavalry on the other then you can support both of your infantry formations and again divert a lot of that attention away. Um, so yeah, this is just another tactic that you can use. It works best against these guys um, because they just focus so much on their infantry. Um, one of the best things you could do, we're using Imperials so we don't have them unfortunately. If we had a lot of men of Leotons, so they're two-handed infantry with no shields. Now I know I said obviously the Sturgeons use a lot of javelins um, which pack a hell of a punch so what you want to do um, I think I mentioned this as well in the Volandian tactics you want that shield wall formation you want a lot of like legionaries heavy shielded infantry in the front and then in the rear you want a lot of two-handed spear glaive infantry and especially against these guys so the Sturgeons pride themselves on their infantry having heavy armored heavy weaponry so what you want to do is you want to counter that as best you can having good cavalry yeah, probably your best way to go with the Sturgeons is having heavy cavalry and a lot of them. You'll probably wipe these guys out because they're slow moving. They're not going to get very far. Horse archers, probably your best bet over cavalry. Um, just keeping away from their loose formations and doing damage from afar. But otherwise, if they're charging you, heavy cavalry, easy, done deal. But if you're focusing on taking them on in infantry, you want a lot of two-handed, unshielded infantry. Because you want to pack masses amounts of damage and you want to kind of create more phalanx formations Um all over the place as many as you can but um don't with these guys don't keep your infantry in one place because they bring the heavy weight they bring the unstoppable force so what you want to do is you want to split that up as many ways as you can create a long long line of all these different positions that they have to attack and yeah they might take down a few they might defeat a few but ultimately you'll win if you can keep splitting them up because if they get to move in a form of test two day keeping all their shields and heavy armor blocking all your arrows and all your hits as soon as they connect with the formation that formation is going to get wiped out but if you split them up have them sending in all different directions you're getting your arrows in there your infantry is moving into flanks even if they outnumber your infantry as long as your men can maneuver them you'll be absolutely fine so otherwise guys i hope this has helped i'm going to end your video here um, if you've got any suggestions comments tips anything like that if you've got any um, tactics you use yourself against these guys any strategies you use yourself against these guys make sure to drop them down in the comments below um, let me know and then let everyone else know as well it's just helpful you help everyone else out um, this is just one again this is one tactic you can use against these guys there are many many others like i said focusing on different cavalry um, if you guys want to see more of these tactics if you want me to show you uh, as many formations as you want using different um, factions against different factions i'm happy to do them there's so many tactics and formations you can use um, in combination with each other that all work. Right, there's absolutely so many different you can do. This is just one of the more basic ones. Um, this is probably one of the quickest, easiest to learn. That is somewhat efficient. It does work. It is efficient against these guys. Um, and yeah, so let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you agree, disagree. Um, and yeah, drop a comment. Make sure to go ahead and join us on Discord as well. We can have a chat there as well. And you can have a chat with the community. And you guys can share your opinions and all sorts of things like that. And share your playthroughs. And let me know how they're all going as well. Um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It just supports the channel massively. Um, and you can keep up to date with all the content that's going to be coming out. And it's going to be coming out every day, guys. I'm going to try and get some more playthroughs going. I'm going to try and get some uh, different games up on the channel as well. And loads more tutorials and how-to guides. Um, just showing my opinion and my playthrough, my tactics that I use. Um, with these sort of games as well 
otherwise guys i hope you've enjoyed this i hope this has helped you out in any way shape or form please let me know if it has and please let me know if it hasn't as well and i'll get back to you and hopefully we can fix that then um, otherwise guys i'll see you in the next episode have a good one goodbye